Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. Thank you so very much. Today we are cracking open a new saga. Something about a Christian rock star, stalker beard, something like that. Um, it's pretty intriguing just from the title alone. The post is nice and beefy and you know that's what I like a good long length uh, <laughs> not to make it too weird I guess <laughs> we're gonna see how this goes I think it only has two or three parts but they will be their own videos because like I said uh, pretty long I think I will enjoy it and I hope that you will as well we're live streaming this on twitch if you'd like to come through I would appreciate it we'll get some additional plugs and disclaimers out of the way and then we will dive right into some of this r slash neckbeard stories ah, cringe Christian rock star stalker beard. Yeah, maybe something like that. Is this gonna be like that South Park episode where Cartman tries to start up like a, a Christian band or something like that? Honestly, if it brought the money in, I probably would do that as well. Part one, introducing the stalker beard. I mean, given how beards behave most of the time, it's kind of surprising that we haven't had this category of beard quite yet. Or maybe it's just like they did that, but it wasn't their only defining feature. I'll be interested to see how this one goes. Nice to meet you, Internet. Hi, user Sova tells stories. Red X also tells stories, if you didn't know. <laughs> I'm a long time lurker, first time poster, so I'm hoping that I'm at least posting this in the correct sub. I mean, it's the correct one if you want me to read it, I guess. <laughs> I always listen to Red X during my walks and, well, I do have a couple of stories to tell myself. Yes, and then tell them to me, and then I'll tell them to the internet. Oh, what a wondrous symbiotic relationship we will soon form. Also, I do this to work on my English since it's my third language and my college degree. Dang, I don't even speak one language that good. As the caption tells you, yes, this will be a story of levels so absurd, so inhumane, that I myself cannot believe that it is still unraveling as I type it out. Oh, maybe it'll have more than three parts then. <laughs> if it's still going, good lord. Introducing Sova, R-O-P. A 15-year-old insecure introvert struggling with school and family issues prefers to stay mute until somebody initiates conversation, but can keep the talk up and going if needed. Yes, I identify with that quite a lot. You might be surprised considering how I get here and yak into a microphone, but social interaction is super difficult. <laughs> Talking about appearances, the most prominent features of mine would be the long, soft hair, the color of burnt honey, as described by another neckbeard, burnt honey, bro. <laughs> uh, why you always gotta compare women to food? Cut it out! It's weird! Short height and a bit of extra weight. Because of the latter, I always underestimate my attractiveness and overcompensate with my personality, which has led me to a lot of incidents like the one that you are reading right now. Also, an atheist. Oh, the beards must love that. So euphoric. <laughs> also introducing Liz at the time 16, a great childhood friend of mine, but also the one who triggered the story. Usually, Liz would be the extrovert, who adopted the introverted me, but this time it's the other way around, with me adopting her after she moved from a neighboring country, teaching her the language and helping her to make friends. So it sounds to me like maybe you guys aren't strictly introverted or extroverted, it's like flextroverted, right? <laughs> you could be one or the other depending on the situation. That sounds a bit more human to me. Despite all the troubles with education because she's a foreigner, Liz is an excellent student whom I respect the most. Also struggling with family issues, tall, lean, with deep brown flowing hair to the middle of her back, emerald eyes and freckles, the embodiment of beauty itself, an atheist as well. 
I think the atheist thing is going to come into this story, isn't it? Well, I mean, this is the, the Christian neckbeard, so yeah, he's probably going to try to convert some ladies. The emerald eyes thing also throws me off. Is that, like, also a thing that the neckbeard threw out? You can't eat emeralds, neckbeards. Back up. <laughs> and what can two pretty teenagers do in the heat of youth and the middle of summer? Of course, work their butts off at 15-hour work shifts. Ugh. Wasted that childhood away, but at least you get some extra money that you don't know how to spend, right? Thumbs up! <laughs> we were both the one single person who brought money into our homes and spending all their free time at work. Our days off would usually be spent lying in bed, dying of leg cramps and back pain. Bro, y'all dependent on a 15 year old to bring in money? The only people bringing in money? <laughs> oh, uh, that is madness already. What are you doing? Where are your parents? Where are your parents? They're dead. Or uh, possibly swimming after we resurrected from the day before. Conventionally, I lived right in the bee hole of our town near the canyon, which was usually the place that we went to, and this warm midsummer evening, when the sun was just starting to set, a thought visited Liz as we were drying off in the tree's shadows. A single thought that led to the events that still haunt me to this day, three years since that warm summer evening. Liz, I wanna eat. Do we have any snacks? OP, um, no, I don't think so. You ate the last apple on our way here. Liz comically groaned and made a sad face. Liz, oh, I know. Photosynthesis told me they host a church youth meeting at 7 p.m. And there will be sweets and hot chocolate. Oh boy, couple atheists wandering into church for the food. That's how they get you. <laughs> Don't let it happen. I mean, unless you want to, whatever. Also introducing uh, Photosynthesis. Yes, we really called him that, and still do, because of him hanging around with us for around 12 hours a day and refusing all of the food and drinks that we offered. Oh, he probably thought y'all were up to something sly. He's like, nah, you drink it first. <laughs> he didn't even go to the toilet. A boy older than me by only a day, with the same name as me and only one centimeter shorter than I was, the brother of Stalker Beard, the adequate sibling, besides washing his hair with horse shampoo, which he bragged about a lot. I mean, that mane and tail is pretty good stuff, but I don't advertise that fact. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Short brown hair, big gray eyes, a cute boy overall. Totally Lissa's type at the time. Wouldn't call him an introvert, but he was certainly awkward around girls, as most boys are at that age, I do think. He mostly hung out with Liz, visiting her at work, him being the one who told her about his weird bro, and through Liz, I knew a bit about our neckbeard as well. R.O.P. Sova, being the introvert, avoiding all social events possible like a wanted criminal, suggests, well, maybe we could just walk two minutes to my house and I could cook us up something, Liz, and missed out on free food at the meeting, O.P., that is a small price to pay for not embarrassing myself in front of strangers and photosynthesis. Knowing Liz, I already knew what awaited me after denying, and Liz, knowing how to play on my strings, leaned in, making the world's teariest puppy eyes and puffiest lips, squeaking in my ears louder and louder with each angle it took for me to look away. Sometimes I think she was at the squeak frequency so high that it might have ascended to ultrasonic levels. And not being able to stand those sounds and psychological tortures, I gave in after only a couple more no's. I've seen this trick used before. My wife uses it to great effect, okay? <laughs> I didn't know it could work on neutral friends as well. We're learning every single day. Liz, shining with happiness, Great, then if we start getting ready right now, we'll be there in time. So we packed up our things and headed to my home to change and dry off our hair properly. Come on, why don't you just stay at the house now? You're already here. <laughs> While we did so, we became late and had to rush to the church, which was surprisingly not very far away from my place, less than a kilometer away. 
By the time we arrived, most of the attendants were already there, playing card and ball games. The church itself was a not-so-big building with two floors, the first being the hall, kitchen, and indoor game room, and I wasn't on the second floor, but probably just the attic up there. Outside the church was the trampoline for small kids, a swing, a picnic table opposite the swing, and the campfire area with benches around it, next to the pavilion which separated the campfire and swing areas. All the rest of what little free space was left was used for the ball and frisbee games. See, they got free food, they got all kinds of games, they really are trying to get them young, ain't they? <laughs> this should be more of like your own volition rather than we lured you in with a frisbee. Excuse me, I'm looking for a car that's been tricked out to look like an ice cream truck. That ain't a good look, I I'm just gonna say that. Around 30 attendants, ranging from 12 to 24 years old, were scattered in the yard, chatting or playing. Among them, Liss almost immediately located photosynthesis and ran towards him. Me, being her tail, followed her right into the swarm of people. Ugh. <laughs> After a short introduction, we split with Liz already beating some kid's butt in Uno and me showing some interested people my art. Well, look at you out there making friends. Not so introverted after all. Proud of you. <laughs> I made friends with two girls who were from the same college that I had transferred into this summer, and we chatted about what horrors Liz and I should expect there. And in those conversations, we spent a couple of hours on the swing, comfortably isolating myself from talking to any more than two people at a time. Good strategy. I need to try that one out. <laughs> when all the people had gathered, we moved to the church hall, prayed and sang some religion theme songs from YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, they got everything on the YouTube, don't you? Why don't you pull up some Red X videos? That's a great idea. And while Liz was enjoying finally using her school band singing talents with her whole heart and throat, even going extra and giving a solo performance. Oh God, <laughs> why you gotta do that? Okay, whatever. I barely stood on my social anxiety shaken legs, avoiding all possible social interactions after the singing part was over by either drilling holes in piano keys in the back or playing with the neighbor's dog near the campfire. Dogs are so good during social interactions. You want to get away? Go go talk to the dog. He won't bug you none too much. You just rub him and that's all that he requires of you. It's a beautiful thing. Always bring dog to party. <laughs> it's a crutch, but it works. Shortly after uh, Liss's concert, she came back to the yard, leading the cooks who were now setting up the snack table near the campfire for the last and best part of this meeting. Of course, an honorable amount of snacks went missing under Liz's watchful patrol, but it was, after all, the sole purpose of our atheist infiltration of this youth meeting, so I really can't blame her. Oh, now you steal it from Jesus, right? <laughs> you know God ain't gonna let you have those hot dogs. You're gonna have to answer for that on Judgment Day. <laughs> uh, while helping to arrange the table, Liz shared with me some information that she noticed while patrolling. Liz, so you see that guy in the red and black hoodie in the pavilion? OP, the one with the guitar? Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, oh why? You playing the three chord song like it's impressive or something? Put that thing away! God, I hate with guitars out in public. Liz, yeah, him. That's photosynthesis, bro. OP. Huh. By the way you described him, I thought he'd be more... neckbeardy. And indeed, Stalkerbeard was really nothing of a neckbeard on the outside. Rather tall, lean, no body hair or beard for that matter. And from far away, it even looked like he showered. Okay, but get a little closer. The proof is in the pudding, right? Dude walking around with a, an acoustic guitar in public, that's already a red flag, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> and we might have cheapened the phrase red flag, but I'm still counting it. I don't care. It's on my personal list. I'm pretty sure this is Guitar Beard. He just went overseas to work his beardy shenanigans. 
But as Red X says, it's the beard on the inside that matters. That's right. Pick up that shirt over at Teespring. Link in the description. Thank you so much. <laughs> in the moment, I could have even described him as somewhat pretty, which was one of the reasons that I fell into his trap. I can't exactly describe what he looked like in the moment, as now he had morphed himself to be more likable to me, that messing with my memory of him from earlier days. But I do remember that he had a hair color similar to mine, albeit a few shades darker, and it was around ear length, styled like some emo kid trying to cosplay Yuki from Mirai Nikki. Here we go, dropping anime names. Here we go, comment section eating me alive for not knowing how to say it. Oh well. <laughs> Liss. I mean, he hasn't talked to anyone here all this time, and he's been eyeing us for quite a while now. Just staring. The hell? He expects you to go over and talk to him because he's carrying a guitar instead of having an actual personality. God, I heard it! <laughs> OP just says, yeah, I haven't talked to more than three people here either. Maybe he's just an introvert. Liss, I don't know. He's weird. OP, you want to check it out? No. No! <laughs> OP has this incredible talent of finding a way to befriend anyone. Being human Play-Doh when it comes to personality. Okay, but are you talking about yourself in the third person right now? I'll allow it. It's whatever. <laughs> OP also has an incredible sense of a person being a piece of crap by only observing them for a short time. OP also was incredibly biased by her own preferences, dismissing all the red flags that were towering over Stalkerbeard's head higher than Mount Everest. Yeah, maybe the flags were just so high you couldn't see them no more. Those red flags have breached the stratosphere! <laughs> Liz, I would not recommend checking. Photosynthesis always talks about how weird he is and how cringe he is. I mean, cringe doesn't really mean anything in this day and age, does it? Everything's cringe. Everything's also cool and chadly. It just depends how confidently you do the thing, right? OP, how bad could it be? He might just be a weirdo like me, or in the worst case, I will get some cringe out of it. <laughs> poor, poor, naive OP. The underestimation of one's weirdness and cringiness had never led her to the depths of hell as dark and fiery as that which was inhabited by the Stalker Beard. In all her naivete, she took the course to the pavilion where the lonely bard was playing the strings of his worn down guitar. Bro, that's this red flag already. I'm feeling the weirdo alert go off in my head. <laughs> uh, I don't like it. As she strayed further and further, her loyal friend had already begun mourning the pure soul that was about to be burned alive in the flames of pure cringe. Ah, come on, I go through it every day. It ain't that bad. You get used to it after a while, maybe. <laughs> Walking closer to the bard, OP noticed that attached to the guitar cords was a pencil wrapped in a paper tied under the strings. A great conversation starter, so to say. I think he's using it like a, a, a poor man's capo or something like that, right? So you can put it on the third fret or whatever and play some higher notes without having to actually know how to bend your hand towards the higher note. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not very good at guitar either, but I don't take it out in public, so poo poo. <laughs> OP says, hey, your music's great. Oh, don't lie to the boy. <laughs> I noticed a while ago, but what's with the pencil? Doesn't it get in the way while playing? Approached by a rather attractive, interested female, the wild Stalker Beard was noticeably startled. Stalker Beard? Oh, uh, it's actually, uh, some strings got loose and I, uh, I can't afford to change them, so, uh, so I just fixed it myself with whatever was on hand. <laughs> OP? Oh, that's handy, so it basically tenses him up? I understand you're trying to be nice, you're trying to give this dude a chance, I just don't understand why. 
<laughs> Get the food and go, <laughs> Stalker Beard. Yeah, so, you know, without the pencil, it sounds like bleh. He blabbered while taking the pencil off and strumming his actually mute loose strings. And it's back to normal when it's in. Then he tried to put it back in, struggling while doing so because his hands were literally shaking. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I mean, I guess at 16, you know. But all I'm going to say is never let him see you sweat. All right? OP is more forgiving than the girls that I knew at this age, I'm sure. <laughs> OP? Hmm, performance anxiety, huh? <laughs> uh, so forgiving. I asked, noticing how he was getting uncomfortable because of the shaky hands. I tried to dilute that awkwardness. Yeah, I get it too. Haha. <laughs> Stalker beard. Yeah, no. I actually kind of want to play on stage one day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> OP, you do? You sing or just play? Which genre, Stalker Beard? I'm not so good with vocals, but I learned some songs. You want to hear? Oh, he's been waiting all night to show somebody the two songs that he knows. All right, go off, I guess. Refusing to listen would be a jerk move to do when the boy was obviously so passionate about it. Actually, so passionate that he was already beat red from the excitement. So, I agreed, and was blessed by a very, very poor performance of Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit, which was made even worse by Stalkerbeard's poor English muttering. It's hard to he apparently learned the same song in Ukrainian, our mother language, so I was blessed to hear this version as well, which somehow turned out even worse. Oh, so he didn't learn two songs. He learned one song in two languages. <laughs> uh, I'm still gonna count it. It's fine. Stalker beard. Oh, wow. You actually know that song? <laughs> uh... I don't know, maybe it's made its way over to Eastern Europe. I'm pretty sure it's like worldwide at this point, right? OP just says, yeah, I'm somewhat of a rocker slash metalhead myself. I prefer foreign bands though. I still have childhood trauma from singing on stage in middle school. So hearing songs in Ukrainian and Russian feels pretty weird to me. Stalker beard. Oh, so you know about, insert very generic mainstream 2012 rock band here. Uh, I love them. I learned a couple of their songs, even. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, though? You might have learned how the chords go, but you also need to learn how to play them. It takes practice. OP. Yeah, I do, but I actually prefer Japanese ones. Utsupi and Undead Corporation are my mm, chef's kiss. I always listen to them when I draw or write. Stalker beard. You draw and write? Can I take a look? Oh, and I write a bit myself, too. OP? Oh, what do you write? Stalker Beard? Uh, usually lyrics to my songs. I'm pretty good with rhymes, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's a musical genius, undiscovered, unappreciated in his own time. And, okay, hear me out. I try not to poop on anyone's passion, but... At this point, I was so full of cringe that I felt my insides rearranging themselves, shriveling up inside. This man, who couldn't even make eye contact with me for more than two seconds at a time, bright red, with shaky hands, who translated already written songs, changed the lyric to match his liking, and called them his own creation, was sure that in a few years, he would gather crowds at his Christian rock band concerts on par with Imagine Dragons or Hollywood Undead, collaborating with them as equals even. I mean, it's good to dream big, you know what I mean? But you got to realize that it, it takes a long way. <laughs> you should have started five years ago if this is really what you wanted. He might be a bit of an old head when he gets into a band, but uh, he could do it if he really keeps his eye on the ball. Problem with neckbeards is they never do. They just feel entitled to something like that. 
Liss, noticing how close I was to letting out my last breath, snatched me away from Stalkerbeard before he could attack my eardrums with yet another cover of Gorilla's Feel Good Ink. <laughs> it makes me feel bad! <laughs> Lucky for us, it was time for the discussion of some Bible verses and Christian life hacks around the campfire. Christian life hacks? What is that? Go up on a mountain and come back with some laws, right? God life hack this one for me. <laughs> now I don't have to worry about my neighbors coveting what is mine. <clears throat> we were also accompanied by what was left on the snack table by that time. After a couple more hours of brainwashing, washed down by a cup of hot chocolate, we strayed from the topic and just started chatting about whatever with each other. Usually touched by the theme of the discussion, people were talking about their own experiences. Us with Liss sitting together on the bench, cuddling like the most lesbian couple that you have ever seen. With her head on my chest and arms around my waist and me just hugging and playing with her hair. Screaming, we're on our own wave here, do not disturb. And of course, the stalker beard ignored every single social cue with that dumb dumb head of his, seating himself on the bench right next to ours on the side that was closer to me. Can't even feel that bad. You invited this, okay? You should have left him on his own. He never would have gotten the guts to talk to you, but you just had to go over there. Had to ask him some questions. <laughs> now he's gonna be your best friend forever. Stalker beard. Hey, good discussion today, huh? Heard some deep spots in my heart. Really? He started exaggeratingly knocking on his chest with a fist, closing his eyes and lowering his head. <laughs> uh, that is adorable. Please go away. OP? Yeah, I can relate. I replied as shortly as possible not even turning to face him, and continuing to cuddle with Liss. Liss, who was already observing the beard and his advances, and my barely three-word reply, she considered this a signal to leave immediately. God, what a jerk. I'm not a fan. <laughs> First she wants to do her little singing solo, and now you're leaving me in the lurch? What are you, what, what, what kind of friend are you? With friends like these, right? <laughs> and leave she did with a wink and a smug smile tossed in my face right as she ran off, leaving me one on one with soccer beard. <laughs> uh, she's awful. We got two antagonists. In the short 10 to 15 minutes there was left of the meeting's runtime, I knew everything I needed and did not need to know about soccer beard. My knowledge on the events in his life had surpassed even his own mother's. Some of them more than explained his weird behavior, like he was paralyzed during his childhood until the fourth grade. What? How does that work? <laughs> you just like unparalyzed? He's like, yeah, Jesus healed me. Oh, sweet. <laughs> you know, that is the age when kids usually make friends and learn to socialize and differentiate boundaries and social cues. Yeah, that is where his awkwardness and weirdness stems from. He also was bullied because of that later, but he beat down his bullies with animal rage so inhuman that even Goku trembled in fear of him. At least by his own account, I guess. <laughs> Which I think both then and now was an attempt to oppress the female with his dominance. Yeah, that's really weird, bro. <laughs> I mean, I do think that animal dominance is a thing, but usually you don't want to talk about it. You just display it to your female, and she'll be impressed. She'll say she doesn't like it, but deep down I think she likes it. <laughs> Ask wifey about it sometime. <laughs> uh, Soccer Beard also had a whole lot of family issues, and his family had issues with being unemployed, and alcoholic, and living in poverty and all of the stuff that comes with that. God, that's rough, dude. Now you've humanized the beard a bit. Now I'm starting to feel a little bit bad for coming after him. Maybe that beat up guitar is all he has. I hope he plays his way to the top. And then I'm probably gonna take that wish right back later on in the story. <clears throat> well, I did recognize that I was being trauma dumped 
in his hopes of getting any sort of sympathy out of me right then and there. I still heard him out and consoled the guy. One of the traits that ruins my life more and more each day is my inability to turn my head on anyone in distress, even if I don't personally sympathize with this person. It's a good trait to have, OP. Yeah, it complicates things, but I think it's also a, a very human thing. Hold on to that, for God's sake. As time passed, quickly for others and painfully slow for me, the meeting finally came to an end. Clinging on to the opportunity to help bring in the tables and games back to the church like my life depended on it, I ran away from Stalkerbeard and his confessions before they could get any darker. <laughs> yeah, it's just around the corner, I promise you. We are headed for the darkest depths. Best to get out now. Just like me, Liss was helping to move the stuff too, and she was very curious about the mini date that she had set me on with Stalkerbeard. Liss, so, how is he? You kissed him yet? She asked, jokingly smooching her lips. Then you punch her in the lips. <laughs> Uh, I don't need your help. OP says, this man just told his entire biography and address to a woman that he met less than two hours ago. I'm surprised he managed to survive this long with social skills like that. Liss? Oh, wow. It's even worse than I imagined. Any credit card info? OP, if you're interested, go ask yourself. I've had plenty of talking for today. Especially with him. Liss, damn. Well, now you gotta fill me in on that biography of his, you know? You'd know everything if you hadn't abandoned me. <laughs> I'm not rewarding you for your poor friendship. Photosynthesis never talked about his family or home life at all to Liss and avoided any questions about it. So Liss was naturally very interested about what was actually going on. And with the source as open as stalker beard, she had now switched from worrying about dragging me into her info digging to viewing me as a message owl to get closer to this guy that she liked by me interacting with his brother. No, no, do not be a guinea pig. <laughs> the worst friend. Not to say that I wasn't interested in this scheme myself, but it was more of a car crash type of interested and not like I could ever say no to the puppy eye torture that I was subjected to every time I denied Liss's request. <sighs> After all the furniture was back in its place and the yard had been cleaned up, the meeting officially ended and the attendants started to leave. It was really late at 11 p.m., so the organizers had us in groups by the direction that our homes were in. Sadly, Liss lived in another direction from me. Gladly, Stalkerbeard did as well. As the groups were formed and we started to leave, we said our goodbyes and headed home. All the kids that lived near my place had already left because, well, they were kids and they weren't allowed to stay up very late. So I was walking by myself until I wasn't. Who would Stalkerbeard be? without the stalker part of his name, after all. Uh, wait, you're going alone? OP, yeah. Uh, aren't you scared? It's dark and you're walking past the graveyard alone. OP, no, I walk this road every day and it's the same like this in winter when it's already dark, so I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could just be more direct, but yeah, it's a bad situation. You gotta pick the time and place right now. Uh, maybe you just have to endure it, but it is infuriating. And with this, the milady had rejected Stalkerbeard's proposition to walk her home. Quick, while there's still a chance, think of something, Stalkerbeard. Stalkerbeard, uh, oh, oh, well, it's cold and... You're still in a t-shirt and shorts. You want to take my hoodie, at least? Oh, see, there it is. He wants to hook her in for a second interaction to get the hoodie back. No, I'm good. I'd rather freeze to death. Thank you. <laughs> Hypothermia is sounding pretty good about now. Ah, uh, yes. 
the gentleman handing his coat to the milady to keep her from freezing. What a classic. Except it was literally the middle of summer and it was still warm even at night. OP, all pass. It's not that cold and I prefer not to take things that aren't mine. Oh, you're doing such a good job stonewalling him. Don't let him see any chip in your armor. <laughs> Don't let him dig his hooks in. Just keep stonewalling him all the way home and probably stop off at a house that isn't yours and like climb through the backyard or something or else he'll know where you live, which is not good. <laughs> Stalker beard. Hey, are you sure? You look pretty cold, though. I wasn't, and he knew that very well. One of the reasons that I did not take that hoodie was also quite obvious. The smell. The godforsaken smell of a guy who wore a hoodie over a shirt in the summer heat all day long and sweated excessively when talking to me on top of that. Ugh. The nervous flop sweat. Ah, <laughs> uh, I have a very, very weak sense of smell that played a part while I was talking to Stalkerbeard earlier, but now that he started to take it off and hand it to me, my weak sense of smell was bombarded with a smell so obnoxious, I thought the plants near the road we were walking on were gonna wither away and die in an instant. <laughs> Uh, that bad, huh? I guess it was all cooped up in the sweater. Now the sweater's off and the stench can just unfold itself everywhere. I can't even imagine how he smelled to a regular person. Oh, and did I mention, all the time that we were talking, he just invited himself to follow me home, even after I said I would go alone. Twice. And as we walked, we talked some more about rock music and religion and anime. There was a lot of bubbling and even more cringe, but the parts that I consider important are when he fanboyed over isekai animes and associated himself with the main character from Shield Hero that was trending at the time, and he believed that humans were imported on Earth by aliens on God's command. <laughs> uh... Somewhere along the way, I think you might have lost the plot. <laughs> That's probably not something that you want to share with somebody the first time you meet them, is it? <laughs> the dinosaur bones was put in the ground by Satan to test us. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> uh, oh, I really wanted to ask him if he thought the earth was flat too, but... I refrained from doing so. As we were nearing my house, I tried to talk him off so he wouldn't know where I live. Oh God, OP, he's gonna find out. This was his plan all along. This was doomed to fail by his inability to read the atmosphere and social cues. OP, thanks for walking me home. You really didn't have to though. Stalker beard. Uh, my pleasure. Is that your home? <laughs> Very subtle. <laughs> uh, OP. No, I live further down the street. The lights aren't working there, so I'll go alone from here. Stalker beard. Uh, I have a flashlight on my phone. Uh, I could walk you down some more. <laughs> God damn it. Dude. Uh, no, no, thank you. OP, yeah, I got a flashlight on my phone too. Won't you get yelled at if you don't hurry home? It's a long walk for you from here, Stalker Beard. Ah, uh, no, I'm good. If it's down the street, I actually have a shortcut to my street back there. Oh my God, I don't even know how you could peel him off. This is the worst, dude. I would hate to be in this situation. At dark, alone with this creep? I guess this is when you pull out the pepper spray. <laughs> he thought you were acquaintances until you pepper sprayed him in the eyes and ran to your house. <laughs> uh, now, I have lived on this street my entire life. I know it like the palm of my hand. There was no possible shortcut to his street two kilometers away from here. He, for some reason, really wanted to walk me 
right to my house, right to the doorstep. And as I tried talking him out of walking me home, we had actually approached my place. Mission stay anonymous failed. We'll get him next time. <laughs> OP, that's it. Now for sure, thanks for walking me. I tried to politely end the conversation while slipping through the fence gate into my yard. Stalker beard, always a pleasure. <laughs> You know, I haven't had a talk this interesting with a girl for quite a while. Or ever, probably, <laughs> he said. And he was also slipping through the fence gate into my yard. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, no, no, no. Kick him in the face. Where's the pepper spray for reals? It's not a joke this time. OP, how about your girlfriend? I played the bluff card, hoping that... If he indeed had a girlfriend, his guilt reflex would kick in and he'd finally stop following me around, also leaving the gate open and blocking the way further, signaling him to leave aggressively. He, however, did not have a girlfriend. Whoa, I'm shocked. <laughs> and somehow he interpreted my question as a plea to have him tell me all about his intimate life. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I don't have one. <laughs> I did have four, but I dumped them after a while. I'm sure you did. <laughs> OP, oh, you must be a real Casanova then. <laughs> Stalker beard, yeah. Two of them told me that I was too nice for them, and they felt uncomfortable because of it even. <laughs> What the hell is happening here? <laughs> uh, if there is a god, can he save me from this? <laughs> uh, it's hurting me so deep down. By four girlfriends, he means four different tube socks, right? That's what he's talking about. Lefty, righty, and, and a, a pair of crunchy socks. <laughs> uh, uh, when I tell you that this man was so so hard to get through to. In our language, we like to call this like peas against the wall, meaning the words hit them head on, but still didn't get through. Interesting phraseology, honestly. However, in this case, the peas did not even reach the wall. I stopped responding so as not to engage in conversation anymore and just made a surprised face in answer to him. I don't think it's enough to stop responding. You also have to like shut him out, you know? No response, no nothing. Okay, bye. Close the gate. <laughs> and if he stands out there and calls to you, then run in the house and get the pepper spray. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know. The other one was on the internet and with her, it was going better. And we even exchanged pictures. <laughs> you know the kind. Oh, tell me no more. But then it turned out she was talking to other guys, so I had to dump her too. OP, damn, that's rough, buddy. I quoted a meme from Avatar. <laughs> you said it. And then there was one that things were good with for the most part, but we parted because she was jealous. Because <laughs> I preferred jerking it more than uh, being with her. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, if my spine was not powder already. Oh, uh, thank God we're almost at the end. I'm going to put up part two for a long time because this, I just can't with this. <laughs> uh, nope. No. No. -uh, not a single word more. I get it just talking about exes, but... In no way do I need to hear about this beard's bedroom endeavors. OP, damn, I don't even know what to say to that. But you know, if we're gonna hang out here all night, not only will I get yelled at because of walking home with a dude at night, but there's a greater chance that your face will get smacked in too, you know? Tough discipline at my house, stalker beard. Oh, I, I get it. <laughs> Save it by OP. So, good night. <laughs> uh, it's exactly what you gotta do. 
Do not open up any further lines of conversation. Thanks again for the walk and the talk. I said all this before he could open his mouth again, holding the gate's handle, literally pointing at the exit, and bye-bye, <laughs> Stoggerbeard. Guess so. Good night, then, OP. <sighs> Hearing my name creeps me out, as it is, but hearing it from his lips creeped me out to the max. Right as he left the yard, I closed the gate and rushed to the house, whipping out the keys and unlocking the door with marathon runner speed, all in the black of night with no lights at all, just so you can understand how uncomfortable I was. Walking to the kitchen window, I checked if he left already, and what do you know, there he stood, just admiring my yard through the fence for around five more minutes before he left. Oh, the five minutes must have felt like an eternity. <laughs> that, that's enough time to run back in and grab the shotgun, isn't it? <laughs> this is terrible. Uh... After getting my thoughts sorted and deciding never to cross paths with this guy anymore, I told Liss all about this evening through Instagram. A couple of memes and a chat with her did manage to calm me down, and in a couple of hours, I was peacefully sleeping, not even knowing about the storm that was about to unravel in the eight hours of my possibly calm last night. Honestly, I don't know why you would even take this business to Liss. She's the one that left you in the lurch in the first place. She could have pulled you out and she purposely decided not to. Stalkerbeard is not out there just admiring the yard in the middle of the night. He's looking for places that he can come and go without getting caught. Ugh. I hope you're locking your doors. I hope you're buying some personal defense system of some sort. This is not going to turn out well, dude. During the first interaction, I'm like, oh, haha, -ha, cringy dude. He has some, you know, big ambitions that he'll never achieve. But by the end of it, like I said, I take all the wishes that he would make it away. He is through and through a creep. And I guess we'll find out just how creepy in part number two when we get to it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode, friends. If you did, I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. I always appreciate that. Maybe share the video around. You know, all kinds of links in the description. Plugs, playlist, podcast. You know what it is. Spotify, iTunes, Teespring, etc. I got uh, social medias. We did live stream this on Twitch, but I also got a Twitter and a Discord and a Facebook. I'd also like to thank my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons and YouTube channel members. As I do every episode, Jerry, Jerry, much. So thank you too. Starting with our channel members, Train Boy, that one gay cop, Valley Eyed Crane, Sheeza, a tiny void, Angel Dark, Bedazzle Misery, Skylar Rain, The Fez Wearer, Rosie Rainbow, Slow Spooner Jerry, <laughs> Sean Cantwell, Heaven Set 777, Robert Thibodeau, Jackie McQuitty, Grim Strive, AJ Collins, Tooth Plushy, Corey Arts, Kelly Clark, Florentic Waver, Dungeon Bat, Billy Dean, Robert Waits, Brandon Ashcraft, Phantom Danica, Or Gaming Steve, Skylar Way, Morningstar, The Gypsy Barber, Fire Drake, Samantha, Desk Flagship, Buy Two, Get One Hand. Heading over to Patreon, we've got Harley Owen, Robert Waits, Camille Sarah, Chance the Blue Kraken, Dixie, Ellipses, Captain Clown, Jerry Hong Kong, Deku, Esteban, Or Gaming Steve, Pete Dalton, Boss, with that, one for forgiveness. PCB, <laughs> Santa Jerry, Silent Revolver, a very tired Jerry, a few that, a Justy Dargonian Jerry, Aaron Jerry, and Frank and Barry, ain't that a hot bitch though? <laughs> Sassy Punk Jerry, bang bang, Baby Jerry, Benji and the Jets, Billy D, Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Grimes Kraken, Commander J Tank, Comrade Mooney, Destiny Piper, Dr. Larks, Aaron Error, Erratic Mechanic, East Mars, Fluxer, I don't have friends, I got tendies. <laughs> Uh, Rose Nova Studios, Fire Drake, Gizmo Jack, Hadrian BR, Irish Pirate, Lost the Blue Marble and a Mutiny. It's time to get it back. Ayanalo, JM Coon, Jerry Smith, Jerry Kitsune, the original Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Outlaw, Mother Truck of Hong Kong, Jerry, 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 I'm begging you, please don't take my beard. <laughs> Jerry, Jukebox, Jerry, Cage Alex 9, Kira, Crew He, Cuddly Kraken, Lady Italian Grey on Dino, Lady in Awakening, Lauren Crow, Legitimate Girl, Lord Jerry, your leader of the Thunder Jerry's, Luca Max, Flows Race, John Driver, he was a good friend of mine. <laughs> like and subscribe, Milady Nix, Melgar the Destroyer, Metal Factor, not another Jerry, but he is though. Paragon Soul, Phantom of the Pines, Jerrykins, and Jerry Beth. Queens, Quaaludes, and Quagmires, Redwin, Rose, Jerry Miller, Sarita the Lolita, Scarlet Scoven, <laughs> Sergeant Gang Cop, Burger of the Law, Silo Whip, Stephanie Gunner, Sign After Booster, Brilliant Tomago, The Gypsy Barber, The Littlest Who, The Watch Your Fusky, This Isn't Even My Final Beard, <laughs> Tick Jerry, Trying to find another bomb to get back to the real world, Vanguard Angel, BC3, Viking Jerry, We Can Tech, Stephanie Gargoyle, or Clay, Arnold Boys, Even the Weebs, We Can See the Out Train It, Maybe, <laughs> A Normal Jerry, All right, Red, For You I Bring Doritos, But I Count Against, But These Are Their Drag Beards, I Know What To Do, Admiral T Tank, Emerald Alder, Another Stupid Hipster, Atomic Jerry Zillabad, Penny Lake, Bartender Kelly, Big Dead Wolf, Promise Pine Horse Radish, The Original Jerry, 
Jerry, Cake Jerry, <laughs> California Jerry Girl, Carcass, Chicago Panda, Coy does commissions. Wow. Oh, now. Yeah, I got that right. <laughs> That's why I'm leaving it. Cryptidies, the Fly Jerry, the Defter to the Dilf Jerry, Dwarfy Dudes, Five Nights at Jerry's, Get to the Doodles, also commissions open. Jerry Boo's daughter, Ghost of Alpha Greymon 365, Half Slavic Jerry in a tracksuit, Heath Knot, Hydra Jerry Solman, Jace Christensen, Janitor Jerry's back from the abyss to clean up after the teenage beards. Good luck, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, <laughs> Gerald of Rivia, Jerry, but with two S's and E, Jerry Springer, the results are in. You are not the neckbeard. Jerry the Sussy Baka, Jerry's mom has got it going on. Jerry Old Rivera, Jerry Roxers, Jerry Role Playing Game, Kid Marvelous, Lucia Lovecraft, Machia CD, maybe next time is Duchess, Mr. Gas Mask, Nog Viper, Not Invisible Angel, Raptor, I've seldom dark snob, Jerry, the snary if you didn't know, Spoonie the Rope, Spoopy Scary, Jerry Ton. Hey, we're in October for reals now. Susan Beard, if anyone has one more fun, I'm taking all the attendees. Yeah, you can say heck once as a treat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Techno Dubs, the Copa Jerry Two Knives, Third Stuff, this is purely a mercantile transaction. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it is, though. To Infinity Jerry and Beyond, Tokyo Bird, Uncale, Vaughn, Venom Jerry, Throw Stooly to Mountain Dew, Grow my neck beard, grow! It's Jerry time, hold Red X Morpher, Hygiene, it's Jerry time, hold Red X Morpher, Humility, and thank you to my $1 patrons as well. Bless up to all the Jerry's and not Jerry's alike. You're doing the most to help me out here. Things is not looking good on the YouTube recently, <laughs> if I'm quite honest. So if you can support, that's huge. If you can't, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me. And I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow in order to do so. You need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like uh, watching some more Red X videos. How about it? Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye. Uh,